Hey, it's Chris. Today I wanna to help you get the most out of your iPad by helping you realize all the cool new features that are buried in iPadOS 17. Lots of stuff that even I didn't realize recently. But let's kick this video off by talking about Apple Notes because there's some great new updates. In particular, I love the fact that you can link notes now and there's a shortcut that you can type. Two forward arrows will bring up a list of notes. You can start searching for a note there. You can even create a note right from that menu and automatically link to it. Perfect for creating a personal wiki for yourself or even a team. I love the new collaboration features. For instance, now that you can mark up PDFs directly within notes in line, and by the way, that also works for scanned documents. You can mark those up in line in notes as well too, you can see in real time what they're marking up in your PDFs as a collaborator. This is gonna be great for students, gonna be great for teams. And just a quick note so you don't gloss over it, there's a new block quote formatting option within notes. So you can really call stuff out and highlight stuff within your note so it doesn't all just look the same. Next, we gotta talk about the changes to the lock screen because of course, the lock screen is where you kick off your iPad experience. So it's where it all begins. And the new interactive widgets are awesome for the lock screen, but it matters which way you have your device oriented. In portrait mode, widgets appear underneath the time. But if you rotate things into horizontal mode, your widgets shift over to the left and you have more space. Now, as you're editing your lock screen, tap on the widget above the time because there's some select widgets there that can appear and you're not stuck with the default. I think a lot of people are just gonna gloss right over that. And don't pass up the fact that you can now link specific lock screens with a focus mode. So if you wanna have something that's like photos for your personal time, but then a really information rich focus mode and lock screen appear automatically for you when you're in work mode, you can set that up now, just automate it. And I'll also just say, don't forget that you can scroll up on your lock screen to see your full notification roll. I also wanna make sure that you're getting the most out of live activities on your lock screen. Of course, if there's some sports on or something, you can get notified in real time of what's happening, but you can also do things like set multiple timers and have like four timers up on the screen at once if you want to. So that'd be good in the kitchen, for instance, if you're cooking. All right, enough about the lock screen, let's get into Safari. A huge benefit for people now is the ability to separate your personal and professional browsing. So you can separate history, cookies, tab groups, favorites, which is good for a few reasons. Because number one, when you're not working, then you want to kick out of work mode. You don't want your work stuff just hanging out in front of you. But also just in terms of productivity, being able to have a focus mode dictate what you're seeing in Safari at any given time, especially your tab groups, that can be such an upgrade. I hope you get the most out of that. A quick announcement, I'm posting so much new content over on X because I'm seeing tons of new engagement. So connect with me over there, x.com slash daily tech or twitter.com slash daily tech goes to the same place. Also, shout out to everybody who's purchasing the courses. A lot of people are purchasing both courses at the same time, so it's nice to see that feedback. They're linked up down below. I can't wait for you to dig into them. By the way, as I'm opening up my Safari, I'm seeing I've got lead pages open. I love lead pages. If you do anything business related, lead pages is like a magic bullet in terms of conversion rate. I'm getting a little sidetracked here, but it's actually worth linking up. It's a hack for you. I'll just briefly mention there's interactive widgets on your home screen now too. So all the relevant Apple widgets, of course, aren't just glanceable now. You can actually interact with them. Here's something else that got a major upgrade, AirDrop. I use AirDrop all the time, so this is majorly convenient for me. If you go outside of AirDrop range after you begin an AirDrop, the file will continue to transfer. One thing I'm delighted to point out because I use this all the time and I hope that you start using it more too is that dictation has been much improved. It's way more accurate now. So already it was one of my favorite features for the iPad ever when they let me dictate and type at the same time without having to reactivate the dictation every time I wanted to talk. But now that it's much smarter and that it's more accurate, it feels like a huge, huge upgrade. Freeform, which quickly became one of my favorite new apps, has gotten some insanely cool upgrades. There's some new drawing tools, very cool. There's perfect shapes, a lot of people were asking for that. That finally arrived. There's a new diagramming tool and I can't wait to break that down more fully in a separate video I'm gonna be doing just on the new Freeform features coming soon. So subscribe so you don't miss it. But one of the most useful new Freeform features is the ability to easily add content to your boards using the share sheet. So don't gloss over that. Getting stuff into Freeform boards just got a whole lot easier. Now I feel like it's become popular for people to downplay what Apple's been doing with Stage Manager, but I'm the opposite. I'm gonna play it up because I really, really like what Apple's doing with Stage Manager. Not only is it more flexible now, so you can really have fine-tuned control over where you place your different apps and windows, but they added a really cool way for you to fast pair app combos now by holding on the window that you want and then clicking on another one in the dock and it's instantly paired. And as I've begun using this, I realized that it saves me quite a bit of time. Also, thanks to Stage Manager, and this is a pretty big deal, especially for you iPad-only people out there, you can now use Stage Manager to utilize the front-facing camera on something like a studio display for FaceTime calls. So you don't have to look at your iPad camera down here anymore. You can actually be looking right up here at your screen, at your monitor. It feels so much more natural and you're like, 
wow, this is the way it's supposed to be. Let me just quickly take a minute to mention our sponsor, Paperlike. Paperlike is one of my favorite iPad accessories of all time. I only cover stuff here that I actually recommend and personally use myself. I personally love Paperlike because it does give me that Paperlike texture, of course. I can't actually use an iPad without it, without noticing, oh, this doesn't feel right now. But it doesn't ruin my viewing experience when I'm viewing content. I'm a professional video maker, I like to watch a lot of videos, and it still looks great with the paper like. Such an upgrade, check it out, it's linked up down below. Now when you have somebody over to your house, it's annoying, right? When they're like, what's the Wi-Fi password? And a lot of us don't know, cause you got like some crazy string of stuff that was randomly generated, and you gotta go look it up, and it's been a pain in the past. Well now, that's fixed. If you're using Safari, so much easier to share passwords and pass keys. One of the coolest features that you actually have to try yourself to realize how great it actually is, is the ability to use your Apple TV 4K with FaceTime calls off your iPad. I love how Apple pulls all these different elements of the ecosystem together to actually make use of them. So now, if you wanna view the people that you're talking to on the best, nicest screen in your house, your TV, you can really easily do that. And I gotta tell you, the experience is totally different. Once you've done it, you're almost definitely not gonna wanna go back to the way you did it before. Because for me, FaceTime is usually done on the iPad. Whenever we're connecting with family or something, I grab the iPad. And now to be able to use it with the TV, that's just like a chef's kiss. Oh, something else that came to FaceTime that I'm really excited about is the ability to leave a FaceTime message, like a voicemail for FaceTime. And what's extra cool is that if somebody can't take your FaceTime, they'll still be able to watch it on something else like their Apple Watch. Now hopefully you've started to make use of live text. If you have, don't forget that live text is also working now with handwriting. So if you've written out some actual notes on a real piece of paper and you take a picture of that, you scan it in, then live text is gonna be able to activate and work on this. You can easily copy and paste that and convert it into something digital. As you can see from my example here, which happens to mention my new courses, which is a good segue into telling you, you should check out my courses. I mean, what would you do with an extra thousand dollars a month? You can find out with my side hustle course. What would you do with an extra two hours every day? Find out. My course company is The Great Onboarding. There's two excellent courses waiting for you to check out. Of course, I'm gonna link them up down below. Along with this thing, I get comments every single time I featured in a video. It's linked up down below. You don't even have to ask. One thing I originally thought was gonna be the most useful on the iPhone that you can also do on the iPad now is save maps for offline viewing. So saving a map to your iPad for offline viewing in case you find yourself in a spot without an internet connection is actually pretty cool because the iPad is a big screen and your phone is a little screen and it's kind of nice. It feels like an old school map from back in the day where you'd fold it out and it was big. One thing I'm really liking is the ability to not have to say, hey, in front of Siri. Why? Because obviously it's just gonna be more convenient. But the other thing that's even more convenient than that is that you can string Siri requests together now without having to reactivate Siri every time. So you could say, what's the weather like in Orlando? And when it tells you, you could say, well, what's the weather like in Jacksonville? Oh, and one thing I wanna mention about Siri too is that if you're on a FaceTime call or a phone call, you can actually use Siri. You can talk to Siri, activate it, and get information from it while you're on the call or the FaceTime without the other party knowing about it. They're not gonna hear it. Now, if you have an iPad and you have AirPods with ANC, active noise canceling, then you just got the ability to use adaptive audio, which is a mix between ANC and also being able to hear what's around you, a transparency mode. It mixes that together. But messaging, messages just got a whole lot cooler. For instance, if you're sending somebody a voice message, you can actually pause it now, do something else, and then come back and start recording on that same message so you don't have to have separate messages getting sent and send it off. That's really cool. Also, if somebody sends you a message and it's a long message, a couple things. Number one, you can get a transcript and read through it. Number two, you can play it back at 2x speed or up to 2x speed, I should say, just like on a podcast. That's great. I love doing that on things like audiobooks, for instance. In fact, I can't listen at normal speed. It almost kills me. But something else I want to point out is if somebody sends you an audio message and it's a long one, you can actually leave the messages app and it will keep playing. Finally, another quality of life improvement is that your one-time verification codes when you go to log in are automatically going to delete themselves. So you don't have to go back in and clean that stuff up by yourself. One other cool thing, don't forget that you can now use emojis as stickers. So instead of just tapping it and having it appear in your message, you can just drag it onto a message and it'll pop in 
like it's a sticker. And one last thing to point out, there's now a reason to actually use the Health app on your iPad because Apple's redesigned that app to fully take advantage of all that screen real estate. And that's it for today's video. Hopefully you found some interesting tips. If you have some other stuff that you wanna point out, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to check out the new courses, especially the new side hustle course. Don't forget to follow Daily Tech over on X, formerly Twitter, x.com slash daily tech. I'll just link it up for you. It's easier that way. And don't forget to check out the newsletter. There's lots of good stuff and there's a new one going out today, every Friday actually. I'll catch you in the next one, later.